Isaiah 60, we've been talking about this lately. And as we enter into worship, we just bless the Lord. But I'm reading this out of the Amplified. Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Arise from the depression. I need this today. Arise from the depression. That's Isaiah 60. 60. 60. Oh, 60. 61. It, the, no, it's 60, <laughs> 60 verse, verse 1. 1. But it, listen, rise, shine, for the light has come. That's the King James, but I'm reading out of the Amplified. Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Tonight we purpose to rise into that, into Him. Away from us, dead to selves, but just alive in Him. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Radiant, shine Him. Let Him shine. Let Him be radiant in spite of the circumstances. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It didn't fall on you. It's risen upon you. Awesome. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. And we hear a lot of this. And dense darkness, all peoples. But the Lord shall arise upon you. O Jerusalem. And his glory shall be seen on you. We say, oh, he's talking to Jerusalem, the city. No, no. He's not talking to Jerusalem, the city. He may have thought that. But see, you're in Christ. And Paul said, you have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem. He's talking about to us where we dwell in those heavenly places. So can I read that again? Whenever you hear Jerusalem now read by Isaiah, don't think about that place in Israel on a dusty hill. It's special. You've come to the heavenly Jerusalem in the company of innumerable angels. That's the truth. At Zion, exactly. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all peoples, but the Lord shall arise upon you, O Jerusalem. So you gotta be seated in heavenly places. And his glory shall be seen upon you. Now the earth gets to see that radiant glory because of where you're seated, O Jerusalem. That shield up there, that flag, do anyone know what that is? That's the shield of Jerusalem. That comes from Jerusalem, as a matter of fact. And we are seated in the heavenly Jerusalem, or Zion. You have been seated with him in heavenly places. Paul said you have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem. And as we say the arise shine, yet as it shines, one of the things that I know is descriptive is that when it talks about I saw the city coming out of heaven, right? And we're thinking in our carnal mind, eyes opening up the heavens and seeing it float down. And I'm telling you this, that if you open up your eyes, you see it emerging out of the glory, the glory, which is, means cloud too. You follow. It's not human earth-based, it's heavens-based. It's in that realm-based. You've already come to that. Therefore, as we shine, and the more we shine, the more we, uh, we, the more we radiate him, the more it appears. Let me change something for you. We, think, we say, Jesus, he's getting ready to come. Okay? And then we say, he's coming, right? We think that as something that's going to happen in the future. Yet you're talking about someone who is, was, and is to come. I'm telling you, he is coming. He's on his way. He's in process of coming. Just like I'm in process of coming to you right now. The man has put this date, time, and stamp on it, and I can't find that anywhere. All I can find is signs and times and errors, and then he says, behold, I come quickly. He's on his way. He's coming. You get it? And as we come to the realization, to the light of his glory and understanding this, 
that we've come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, and I am quoting scripture, that as that happens, his glory appears. The scripture actually says that when the Lord builds up Zion, he will appear in his glory. And what had happens is, is as we've come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, and as we bless him right now, and we bless him, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon it, rise, shine, for the light has come, that as we do that, Zion is appearing. And we're seated in the, we think we're seated in a stadium in the front row waiting for some event to happen. You are the event. It did happen. It's happening and it's going to happen. And I asked the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Didn't mean to get into all that, but as you bless the Lord, he, he inhabits the praises of his people, Israel. Isn't that awesome? So Lord, this is why we can say, Kenya, be prosperous. And in a few months, it's prosperous. That's why we can say, be healed, and it's healed. Signs and wonders follow those, right? We're having signs and wonders. So I know it's not popular with what's being taught all the time. But I also know I've never seen power in waiting for some event to happen. But I've definitely seen change when we've accessed and blessed the Lord in his holy place. I have seen the tumors fall off. That's where I've seen things happen. So, uh, so anyway. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all peoples. But the Lord shall rise upon you, O Jerusalem. And his glory shall be seen on you and nations 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 shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising and we just got a report from a bishop who has governmental has governmental favor and we just got a report of a light shining in another nation and discipling going on. And that's because where we come to. Amen. Wow. Holy, holy. So let's just bless the Lord who dwells in Zion in his heavenly realm on his th in his throne. <laughs>
that held you down and kept me from your my grace. Arise now, for your light has come, and my glory has risen upon me.
for your light has come.
Jesus for what you're doing even now in this place where time has been suspended in favor of eternity. Thank you, Lord. I shared the other night something. I, there's some things that are on my spirit to share that have just risen up. And, but the first thing is we're going to reestablish our faith, since it's a substance of things hoped for, we're going to establish it on better promises. And what I mean by that is the other night, talked just briefly about the fact that if you drew a timeline so far back in history that it was no longer time, but it was eternity. And if you drew a timeline into the future that it was so far into the future that it was no longer time, but it was eternity. And we have these promises of God, but we've got this, this sliver of paper, the thickness of a, of a notebook paper, and on that is written the accusations of the enemy against you. And yet that was taken and nailed to the cross. And that's, but yet we have believed that slip of paper over our lives. And we have declared and decreed and made promises and said our amens and stood on things and stood on the promises of God, but we've always had that kind of in our spirit. Where, yes, we did fall short of the glory of God, but yet, since it's nailed to the cross, tonight we're just going to say we're going to replace that moment where you were separated from God and we're going to nail that to the cross and we're going to replace that moment where you fell with the moment where Jesus stood in and once we do that once we replace that and once Jesus is standing in that place then we're going to understand that he was crucified before the foundation of the world so there was never a break there was never a break in your life with God because he called you. He knew you while you were in your mother's womb. He saw everything that you would ever do, and yet he stood there in that place. And we talked the other night about Zion, and we talked about how this one was born there, and that one was born there, and that all of our springs, all of our fountains are in him. And it's unpolluted as we stand in that place. And tonight we're going to say some things and do some things, I believe, because we're going to deal with something. And yet, as I look at that, I want you to also understand that we came to a moment, I believe, where the Lord is saying that, that the time of Zion has come. The time of coming into this place of the fullness of the Father and the fullness of the Son and the fullness of the Spirit in us has come. So I think about the names Josiah and I think about the names David. You all know what Josiah did, right? He tore down all the high places. When he was eight years old, he heard the word of the Lord and he ripped his garment. He was so upset. A little boy, a little boy said, we ain't going to have this. We're not going to have these idols in Israel. And so the Lord is speaking from this eternal place tonight where we have this authority, where, where everything that all the handwritten ordinances against us have been nailed to the cross and the cross happened before time began. We're speaking in that authority tonight in the name of Jesus because there's nothing that stands to accuse us as the righteous sons and daughters of God. And we say Josiah is going to tear down the Nicolaitan system. And Lord, we speak tonight and we say, Lord, remove the desire for the Lord's vineyard from the Ahabs that are in the body of Christ. That is not your vineyard. That belongs to the Lord. It is the Lord's vineyard. Just as Ahab went after Naboth's vineyard, the Ahab spirit has gone after the Lord's vineyard and the Lord says, no more. 
rising up Josiah, the spirit of Josiah, and I'm releasing that, and that is going to tear down the high places in the body of Christ. But it can't happen without David. It can't happen without David, without that spirit of David, that tabernacle of David that's raised up and says, we're going to make, we're, we're going to establish Zion. We're going to establish these streets to dwell in. We're going to, we're going to raise up the old ruins and we're going to establish streets to dwell in. And the children of God are going to be able to be free. So tonight we declare in the name of Jesus the freedom of the captive. No more. No more. If you have an Ahab spirit in the body of Christ, the Lord says no more. It is time. It is time for, for the, even the writing of Jehu to come in and say throw that woman down. Lord, we thank you that there's a harvest and that you are bringing that harvest and it's not coming in. It is not coming into the Nicolaitan system. It is coming into Zion. And tonight, we roar from Zion in the name of the Lord and we say, no more in Jesus' name. No more will Ahab have desire in his heart The Lord said that he was going to raise up eunuchs. And you know what? A eunuch does not have any desire. He's been altered. He does not have a desire for the for anybody. Anybody in the bridal chamber. He's there to prepare the bride. And that's his job. That's his job. He prepares the bride to meet the king. That's it. No more taking the adoration of the bride when it only belongs to Jesus. Lord, we just thank you. We release that tonight. We release that into eternity past and into eternity future. And we establish Zion in this moment. And we say no more in Jesus' name. No more in Jesus' name. No more in Jesus' name. Let the captive go free. Raise up, raise up the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, and release them, Lord. Not in a system, not in a place that says, you're under this, we're all under you, Lord. And yet you have called us friend, and you have raised us up to sit in heavenly places with you. And that is our seat, and that is our place of authority. And we stand with you and in you as you are in us. And we say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that we are seeing the end of the age coming into our time. When you again will stand in the earth, and you will make the proclamation, and you will raise up along with us, Lord. I don't know how many cities I'm getting, but I don't mind five, I don't mind ten. I'll take one if that's all you feel I'm more, uh, or, or I've done, Lord, but there's a, there's a widow somewhere who's got five, I know. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We just, we just even now, we take authority over the heritage that you've given us in the earth because you said the meek will inherit the earth. And so, Lord, we stand here in this place and we cut off. We cut off the work of Ahab. We cut off the work of Jezebel away from your body. And we say, you cannot have the Lord's vineyards. And Lord, we just even now call down legions of angels to take up place across the globe to stand watch over your vineyard everywhere it is, anywhere where someone has believed on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is your vineyard. That is your heritage, Lord. It will no longer be perverted by the ways of men. We established it in this moment, in this time, going forward, going backward. We thank you, Father God, that it has always been that and always will be that. In Jesus' name.